All right, motorcycle fans, you have come to the right place for this video because we are going to show you how high performance motorcycle chassis are made. I'm talking about some of the fastest drag bikes in the world. They come out of this shop here in Baxley, Georgia. We are here in Timbaland Chassis, the home of Mr. Walt Timbaland. Walt, thank you for having me into this shop. I really appreciate it. Glad you come, Jack. We're going to give people a little bit of insight into how you've been able to build some of the quickest chassis in the world. We're also going to look at your awesome CNC machine over there. And guys, stay on this video because at the end, we will get a demonstration from Walt about how he makes some of these components. Walt, first off, for, for people that don't know you, how many years have you been involved in motorcycle drag racing? I started building in 1994. Wow. Yeah. So the knowledge that you have amassed over the years, I'm sure, is just vast from going to the races trial and error what's that been like it's been a it's been a uh, it's just grown through the years you know uh, have a good time doing it well you certainly yeah. do and your results speak for themselves you're looking at a modern pro mod bike right here pro extreme nitrous powered motorcycle they have got so much quicker over the years walt these chassis have really changed in the last 15 to 20 years Tell me about some of the things that you've done and, and how you build these. Uh, the length the length of the bike has changed dramatically from crank to rear. Not necessarily wheelbase wise, but crank, I call it the business end. Okay. Um, so we're talking crank to rear. Crank to rear has lengthened somewhat through the years in the last 10, 12 years, a lot. What's that length typically? Um, on my on my longest bike, we're looking at 58 and a half to 59 inch crank wow. rear. Previously, um, much shorter. Much much shorter, even on the Pro Mod. Okay. Much shorter. Uh, narrow wheels. You know, the Pro Mod back in the day used to be a, a 10 inch non bead lock with 11 inch tire. Now we're running 14 and a quarter. Wow. Inch wheels with 10 and a half inch tire. And Producing short times of sub one short, pretty uh, pretty frequent. That's amazing. Yeah, I know. Being an old school drag bike fan, I remember just seeing these massive tires. Guys used to think the big, funny car slicks, the dragster slicks, were the way to go. Uh, who was it really? Were you involved in switching over to this more modern tire? What what was the catalyst for that? Yeah, we were we were probably one of the first ones, and definitely one of the first ones to do the wide wheel. Um, you know, every year we we go to Performance Machine or John at PMFR and tell them we want a wider wheel, and they said it won't work. <laughs> I said we'll try. It. And the wider we get, the better it sticks. Excellent. And I see some of the other components that you make here. It's not just chassis. Uh, you got the the axle adjuster and just some beautiful billet parts. Yeah, we make we make uh, billet parts for other some of the other chassis guys and the hobbyists. You know, the guys that won't make their own stuff. Bearing supports and triple trees. I think we have a look at that over here. Walt, did you ever think that these bikes would would get as quick as they're running today? We're talking about eighth mile pro mod bikes covering 660 feet in less than four seconds. We are in the threes. Did you ever think we'd see that day? Uh, <laughs> uh, I kind of doubted it, but you know, we, we just evolved and got faster and faster, you know. Tell me a little bit more about the process. When you put the motorcycle up on the frame table, uh, there's so much precision involved. You make sure that all the dimensions, all the measurements are perfect. How do you do that? Everything, everything's got to be square and level and uh, and uh, just jigged up the same every time where you can just produce more and more the same. Uh, is it is it something where if you make a mistake you're you're starting over or are there ways to correct mistakes? Oh, you can always you can always correct. Um, it seems like every one of these chassis that. Uh, they're not really, I wouldn't call them cookie cutter because I try to change from one to the next and improve on the next guy's gonna get an improved model. Sure. Uh, anything we see that we need to do different, we, we, we change. Well, you've developed one heck of a reput reputation. How many customers do you have right now? I know you have customers all over the world. If you had to guess. Oh my goodness. Um, I'd, 
I'd say 80, 90 percent of the pro mods wow. are mine or are components of mine. Okay. And uh, I feel real good about that. Um, a lot of them in the Middle East. We got them in the UK. And, uh, Is it strange for you to build? Build motorcycles here in Baxley, Georgia, that, that you send over to the Middle East and Australia. It, it was a, it, it was it was really a shocker to go to the Middle East and see eight bikes that was competing at a race, and all eight of them were mine. How about that? That must well, have been pretty gratifying. Um, it was. Now look under the body on this thing. Holy moly! Look at that. Is that the nitrous bottle? Oh, yes, oh. carbon fiber bottle. <laughs> Holy moly! Well, tell me about some of the components that we're looking at and some of the technology this, that you've developed. This is this is uh, this is one of two for Jeff Jones from Nashville, uh, Tennessee. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a. We took the carbon fiber top fuel cell. We're not running a fuel cell here. We're running a billet uh, fuel tank in the belly. So that's a big change. I mean, for yeah. years, drag bike guys used to have the fuel cell up here, right? Well, but this is an EFI bike. It's an EFI bike. It's all Max X EFI. Got a high pressure pump in the bottom, regulator. Um, you know, fuel rail is built into the frame. A um, lot cleaner looking on the top side. There's no use in having gravity feed tanks anymore because we're we're like a car. Sure. So uh, everything EFI now. Uh, this That's one is for all carbon, Kenny's component, carbon fiber bodywork. Man. Kenny makes all my body work in, uh, up in Mooresville, North Carolina. It's beautiful, Walt. It really is a work of art. You can just tell that uh, everything has been so thoughtfully designed. Everything is so light. Everything is so carefully crafted. It's beautiful, guys. you got to see one of these motorcycles at the drag strip to, to really appreciate it. It's, it's gorgeous. From start to finish, how long does it take you to make one of these? If you had, Jack, if you had all the components here, uh, front tubes and everything ready, body work and all, you could you could build one in a month probably. Um, what slows you down is just doing all the other stuff I do in-house is all the machine work and daily uh, chores other than just building bikes. Well, speaking of that, let's take a quick look at your CNC machine over here because... Okay. You, you said it best, too. You said the best way to describe this is a big old toy factory, right? This is a toy maker. <laughs> this is a toy maker. It makes sense when you think yeah. about it. These guys are having a blast. Take a look inside, guys. We'll give you a quick look. What type of CNC machine is this, Walt? This is a, this is a, a Centroid-operated Sanjo machine that I bought. I bought it. It was like new, but I bought it without an enclosure, and I built my own enclosure to uh, retain all the chips and fluids and all. and uh, It's really been a help for me not having to farm my parts out. Sure. Giving, not only giving my ideas to somebody else, but waiting to get parts. Right. If I got material, I can come out here on a weekend and build something new. And do you find the way technology is, the way that racing is, when you go out to the track one weekend, you might look at something and say, hey, I can improve that or oh yeah we do it we do it all the time so with that Constantly. philosophy you probably you need to be able to make your own parts right you, you just i don't know what i'd do without it i don't know what i'd do without it but we're making uh today we had a we had an order for some chain conversion uh sprockets for the new harleys to convert from belt drive to chain uh and that's what we're doing here so you can make just about anything. Do you take a lot of outside work, or do you stick mainly to racing? No, we're, we're trying. We're trying to kind of cross over to non motorcycle. You know, uh, or even street bikes, Harleys, Harleys, Harleys. Uh, even non out of the racing, uh, we it, it don't know anything. But whatever you plug into it, it'll make anything you want. Excellent. What's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Uh, you can get me on uh, Facebook. Uh, Timlin Chassis. Timlin Chassis. Um, it, you can look under that or uh, just call me. Love it. Yep. Love it, Walt. This has been very informative. Can we see this awesome machine in action oh, yeah, before well. we wrap this up? And guys, don't worry. We're going to have more videos coming with Walt. We just wanted to give you a, a little taste of what he does here in this very cool Baxley, Georgia-based motorcycle chassis shop.
This is a day in the life of Mr. Walt Timber. So what are you working on with this project, Walt? This is, uh, like I said, this is a chain conversion for the new Harley to convert from belt to a chain. When they put the high horsepower, high torque motors in, they're stripping the belts out, so we do a, we do a sprocket that bolts on to the factory hub. And that's what we're doing now. How long will a job like this take to complete? Uh, 35, 40 minutes from top to bottom. You have to we make the sprocket, we cut the sprocket, uh, we do sprockets as well as modifying them to fit the Harley hood. Love it. Love it, Walt. Thank you so much for giving us this peek. Anything you'd like to add? No, I just, just uh, if you need anything for your drag bike or any machine product, just give us a call at Timberland Chassis. There you go. Thanks so much, Walt. It is Timberland Chassis, where dreams come true, guys. It's an awesome workshop. Always something going on here. As you can see, world's quickest pro mod bikes and a whole lot more. Look, even a street KZ, Walt works on it all. Here's the raw material he starts with. If you need to get a hold of him, here's the contact info right there for Mr. Walt Timberland. Guys, more coming up. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. We'll have more from Timberland Chassis.